This is a fun story. My favorite animal when I was a kid growing up in Central Florida was the American alligator. We have one here, my fave, Cruncher. And we're with Ryan Dumas, who runs our reptile program here at the zoo. You've got dozens and dozens of species you take care of, some big, some small. But how about this guy? He's a great gator, isn't he? How can you not love an American alligator? That's what I say. You know, where you grew up, you probably saw them for a while, and then they disappeared for a while. Oh, man. And that's one of the reasons I absolutely love American alligators. They is, are a success story. You know, of all this, so they have these hard bony things on their backs. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. These are osteoderms, and they are bony plates with grooves, and basically blood flows through there, and they bask, and, they, and the sun heats up that blood, and then they distribute that heat through the rest of their body. So even if it's a 70-degree day, they can heat their body up to 90, 95 degrees. Now, they have the fewest of these, of any crocodilian, so that meant in the late 60s or so, they had the best skin. So people hunted these guys near extinction. Yeah. And this is one of the first animals ever put on the Endangered Species Act. And in 1987, they were actually the first animal removed from the Endangered Species Act. I know, Act. it's a comeback. It's a, it's a heck of a comeback yeah. story. Everyone got together and made this happen with alligator farms where they would uh, take eggs out of the wild and hatch them uh, artificially and then release them back into the wild. So this is, I mean, just, first off, they're, they're more of a timid of the, of the crocodilians, right. but just a heck of an American comeback story, and I can't help but love these guys. Now, and Cruncher, obviously, is our favorite. Now, we have two here, right? He's a youngster, and I handle him a lot and show him to groups because I like gators. He normally doesn't vocalize for me, but he was for you, so that was interesting to hear because I know that young especially will call and their mothers often stick with them, which is unusual for reptiles. Very unusual. Very few reptile species actually provide any type of maternal yeah. care. Um, crocodilians all do to some degree. So actually when an alligator's hatch in a big mound nest, the mother will dig them out and help bring them. They'll even mm -hmm. carry them to the water in their mouths, mm -hmm. which early uh, scientists used to think they were eating them, mm -hmm. but actually they're just carefully placing them uh, into the water. Now, you know, people think of alligators as living in the water, and of course they do. But when the female's going to lay eggs, like other reptiles, she gets out of the water and creates her own nest, right? That's correct. So all crocodilians do one of two things when they build a nest. They either dig a hole or they build a big mound. And to me, I think the mound builders are far more impressive. That's what this girl, this, well, I don't know. We don't know if Cruncher's a boy or girl, but that's what his mom would do. His mom would build this giant mound, maybe three feet high, full of all kinds of debris and organic matter. And as that organic matter would decay with the eggs inside, it generates heat and will incubate these guys. But what's really neat is these guys have what's called temperature-dependent uh, temperature sex determination. So if the nest is a little hot, you might get all boys. If the nest is a little cool, you might get all girls. If you hit that in between, you'll, get, you'll get a little bit of mix. So it's, it's cool. Most crocodilians do that and, yeah. and a lot of turtles. You know what's wild about that is there are things that people discover that happen, such as that. But it's hard to figure exactly why that evolved. But what the heck? must, must uh, help them survive or it wouldn't have happened, right? Yeah, I think Mother yeah. Nature says we need more boys or we need more girls, yeah. and she makes it happen. You know, the other amazing thing to me about alligators is how unbelievably well camouflaged they are. That unless they're moving, in the daytime it's hard as heck to see them. Mm -hmm. If they're moving, you can see the waters, you know, get a V in it. Of course, at night you can use a bright flashlight and their eyes will shine back, but I'll tell you what, as you said, they may not be as aggressive as, say, a saltwater crocodile, but they are, of course, a dangerous predator, and <laughs> they must be able to sneak right up on things because they look just like a log when you're down in a swamp in Florida. <laughs> you make a good point, and I should probably clarify that although I may, in my experience, these may be more of a docile crocodilian compared to others, it's still a very dangerous animal. You know, Lucy, our big alligator, yeah. our big female, yeah. is nine feet, you know, 250, 300 pounds. That's a dangerous animal, so we, we use caution everywhere. But uh, as these guys grow, they have different kinds of camouflage. So you can see this guy's got yellow bands on mm -hmm. him. So he's hiding on the, on the water's edge where you're seeing a lot of grasses and stuff and yeah. you get that sun speckling through and then the adults become dark, 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 dark. And you, it could be the middle of the day and they're just floating around. They do look like a, like a log. Yeah. And they'll sit there with just their head above the water. I mean, they're perfectly adapted for what they do. And there's nothing more impressive than an American alligator, really. Yeah, they're great. Well, thanks for doing this. Next time you're at the zoo, Make sure you can see Lucy, our big gator. She's out every day down in our manatee building. And sometimes we'll be out here showing the public cruncher. <laughs>